drink beer, it's good for you. I'm empty handed and I'm feeling blue, and I'm gonna drink till the day that I die. Hello, and welcome to the video. This video covers the brewing of an American porter. I share my recipe and methods, plus give you instructions on how to make it extra special for Christmas, if you should want to. Ok, so I do realise that it is not quite December yet, but to make this one for Christmas, you really want to be brewing it a month to six weeks before you intend to drink it, for the very best results. Many of you enjoyed my London Porter recipe, and so far it has been the only Porter that I have shared on my channel. Naturally this changes today. You could of course brew the London Porter recipe and apply the changes I suggest in this video to that recipe, if you would prefer that version of the Porter. Thankfully Christmas beers can be styles that you want to drink these days, rather than just bland spiced up ales. Ok, so naturally this is an American Porter, not an English or brown one as the BJCP now refer to it. You may wonder what the difference is. I will cover this shortly as we go through what makes up this style. Like with most ales, the main malt of this style is pale ale malt, and this is typically used between 70-90% to of the total grain bill. British and American two-row pale ale have been used successfully in American porters. Munich and brown malt can also make up some part of the remaining grain bill, but usually at between 10-15% to for the best results. A 21 litre English or brown porter will usually have a maximum of 400 grams worth of dark malts, but in most cases less. Its American cousin however boosts this to almost double in some cases. These dark malts are often either chocolate or black malts, usually at around 5-10%. to Some American porters can also use roasted barley, but this for many is just associated with stouts, though these days there is a certain amount of crossover between porters and stouts. Another big difference is of course in the way that hops affect this style. The British hops in a porter do not scream as loudly as American hops in both aroma or flavour. Some American porters do actually use British and European hops also though. Northern Brewer and Tet Nang are common commercial choices, along with EKG and Fuggles. American hops that are commonly used are Cascade, Amarillo and Chinook. An American porter will usually be more bitter compared to an English one, but this is certainly not something to go crazy with, because this will go against the style. 25 to 60 IBU is in keeping. The other thing to watch is that you do not allow this style to become too dry. Certainly if you wish it to be authentic anyway. A final gravity of between 1.012 to 1.018 is a reasonable guideline. For this reason a high mash in temperature is desirable. Yeast wise both American and English varieties of yeast are common in the American Porter. I would personally avoid the drier strains for a better result for this style. If you are curious about the white water profile for this, then it's best to shoot for medium levels of sodium, chloride and carbonate. It is common to find American porters with an OG of 1.050 up to about 1.070, netting a normal ABV of between 4.8 to 6.5%. So that's a quick overview of the style. Obviously these notes are intended so that if you want to create your own recipes you've got some good look guidelines. Please do realise that they are notes of what is common in the style. Whatever you brew is your choice. Please do not let style guidelines stop you from experimenting. If anything my advice would be to brew to style to start with and then start the experimentation with what you feel will add extra qualities to the style. So here is my recipe. This has been very tried and tested over a period of about 10 years at least, so brew with confidence. Please be advised that this recipe can be found in this video's description and also on the Grainfather Recipe Tools database. 
Also note that this recipe is for 21 litres or 5.54 US liquid gallons. If you wish to brew a different amount then please see my video on this channel for recipe resizing. It's actually a lot easier than you would think. Just keep in mind that you cannot do this with basic maths because the hops will not scale that way. Do note that all calculations are estimates and as such should be viewed as such. This is simply down to the amount of variables that you have in brewing. You would also see that I have put down several options in this recipe. More on this later. So I'm now going to break down the recipe and to start with we'll look at the malts involved in this one. Firstly we have Pale Owl as our base malt. This is at 75% of our grain bill. Do note that this is a bit lower for this style compared to many. Even so, this will be delivering the vast majority of our fermentables. It's low in flavour but high in power. This malt is basically your canvas. Left alone, it lacks much colour or flavour. If you can obtain it, then go for two-row American malt. I would certainly avoid six-row as it can deliver a less clean flavour, unless that's your thing. For those of you that can't get American malt, just get a standard Palau malt and you'll be flying with good colours anyway. I would just say go for the American if you can. Next up we have Munich malt, which represents 9% of our grain bill. This is less effective power-wise, but certainly more flavourful and colourful inducing than power malt. This provides some backup to our power malt to create a more interesting malt flavour background. Then we have Crystal Malt, which comes in at 120 EBC. This provides greater colour, mouthfeel and head retention. Do not worry if you cannot get exactly the same EBC, just shoot as close as you can. This one comes in at 5% of our grist. No portal would be complete without Chocolate Malt, particularly American examples of the style. And here we have two different types of Chocolate Malt. Both of these are at 4% of the grist, totaling 8%. I recommend and list the Carafa malts from Weyermann, a German malt house. They offer a nice variety of different types of chocolate malt, so you can really nail down the desired result. Weyermann have a special range of Carafa malts, and these are dehusked, and this gives a smoother, less bitter effect, plus a regular range on top. The role of these malts is that they will add in a coffee and chocolate flavouring, along with a similar aroma. On top of that, you could also pick up a nice roasted aftertaste. Another role of these malts is that they will impart a great deal of colour into your wort. If you cannot get these carafa malts, then try to get as close as you can from what is available. Keep in mind that one of these is dehusked. Lastly, we have brown malt at 3% of the grist. Now, as you can see, we have a fair amount of dark grain in this grist. One method for brewers would be to introduce this dark grain late. It can be late in the mash-in phase, a common time being with 15 minutes remaining. Some brewers will also add them at the time of the sparge. The reason for this is to avoid astringency and harshness. If you have experienced this astringency and harshness in the past, then this would certainly be something to try. Personally, I have not so I mash all malt types together. Hop-wise, we have the following. Our first hop is Northern Brewer. This is added at the start of the boil and is going to be responsible for the bittering element of this style. It is commonly used in English ales, porters of all types, and Californian common beer styles. It imparts a very smooth bitterness with very nice yet subdued pine and mint flavours, which will very much be in the background on this brew, if noticeable at all. Naturally its function is bittering, and it will do this very smoothly. Cascade is one of our two flavouring and aroma hops. This is probably the world's most famous hop that is known for its citrus flavours that many associate with grapefruit. This hop is entering many different types of styles these days, but it is best known in parallels and IPAs of course. Alongside this we have Chinook, also being used as flavouring and aroma. This will hop will contribute citrus, spicy and piney flavours, along with what many will interpret as fresh grapefruit. 
If you decide to go with the optional dry hop for this beer, then I've suggested Amarillo. This is in some ways like a turbocharged Cascade. It's floral, tropical with lemon orange and grapefruit. I much prefer the orange element of this hop compared to Cascade. If you cannot manage to get these hops, then here are some substitutes that can be used instead. These will not be the same of course, but they will be in keeping with this recipe. I have found that blending similar hops can really have a nice effect, so worry not if you have to do this if you are short of certain hops and need to do a mix. Let's now talk more about some of these optional extras for this beer. I am sure you are all familiar with these, so as such they need no introduction. You will note that I have given some guidelines as to how much to put in. These guidelines are so that they become background notes. A big mistake that some brewers make is putting way too much of these types of ingredients in. It then overtakes the beer and they find that it is not tasting good until a few months after Christmas. Use sparingly and these, this will not be an issue. You can either add these at zero minutes or purify them in a little vodka and then add them late in fermentation. I would not recommend that you add dry hops and these spices. The flavour will be somewhat confused. What does work very well is adding a spirit of your choice and the dry hops. Many people really enjoy mixing a spirit like whiskey or rum with a porter. I am no different. I feel the best way to do this is during the pouring of the beer. I suggest you add the spirit first, then add some beer. You will soon get a feel of how much to add to your own taste. Go ahead, it is Christmas after all. Yeast wise for this one I thoroughly recommend using Liberty Bell, but if you are looking to reduce the sweetness of this a little more, then a US strain can certainly be used. Do keep in mind though that Liberty Bell yeast is also a high attenuation yeast anyway, so the difference will be quite slight. Ok, so that's the recipe explained. Before we move on to my brew of this beer, here is some information about some of the other videos on this channel. I have way over 100 videos now, and this is growing all the time. For those of you that would like more information about hops, then please check out these videos shown on screen now. If you are interested in learning more about the brewing process, then I have a great deal of content on this channel covering this. Here are some popular highlights, including a Grainfather Brewing System Quick Start Guide. And lastly, the most important aspect of successful beer making is the fermentation process. Please consult the guide shown on screen now for more information on this. So here is a quick tour of some of the highlights from my brew day. As you can see, this is certainly a nice dark porter, and I can tell you that it was a very nose-friendly brew. Those chocolate and coffee flavours certainly came through whilst I was brewing this. I guess that I was halfway through this brew when I realised that I had made a pretty big error. I had set my own brew to 75% brew house efficiency. Usually I have two versions of the recipe, one to share with the public and one for my own efficiency levels. I'd gone with the 75%, which basically meant that this one was an awful lot stronger than I had planned. This essentially meant that my target gravity was smashed by a full 16 gravity points. Oops. The effects that this will have is naturally it's going to be stronger alcohol wise, but it will also be a lot less bitter than predicted. What I could have done was watered this one down, but well, I'm a fair believer in fate, and I will accept this less bitter stronger porter. It's not going to be super strong, but certainly stronger than I had planned at 7.75% alcohol. Never mind. What I can tell you is that whenever I have brewed this recipe in its intended form, it really is a cracking American porter, hence why I decided to make it my Christmas beer this year and share it with all of you as well. How it will taste in this form remains to be seen. Or tasted, I guess. I will give you an update in a future brew tasting video. If you intend to brew this for this Christmas, then please do ensure that you do this as soon as you can. You really want to give this one at least a month's conditioning time. I hope it makes your Christmas all the more merry. I do hope that you found this video to be interesting, useful and enjoyable. So if you did like this video, then please do like it on YouTube. This really helps me out and allows the videos to be seen by a wider audience on YouTube. 
I have always got a lot of new videos planned for the future, so if you are interested in seeing my new content, then please subscribe for future content. If you have any questions on anything that I have covered in this video, or any other video, then please do not hesitate to get in touch with me via YouTube or Facebook. I am a member of pretty much every Grainfather Facebook group and more. Happy Brewing!